Whew. Healthy eating is really important. I know that. <laughs> and there are many people out there who are giving you tips how you can manage healthy eating, how you can do that every day in a really simple way. But I'm asking myself, especially after this bowl is empty now, how that shall be possible when I read this menu for the third blind date with Susanne from Bollenhut Art. She wants me to create a journaling card as the main course of this menu. A journaling card is absolutely no problem, but she has written it shall be um, with decorative embroidery in nature colors. Nature colors, no problem. Some brown, some beige, uh, some grungy stuff, no problem. But embroidery, seriously, Susanne, are you kidding me? Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. Welcome to my channel, Junk Journal Art. Welcome to my desk with this empty bowl. I don't know how I can manage to film this video today. This is empty. I have nothing in my uh, stash of these little chocolate um, balls. So I have to live with this empty bowl and I have to live with what I have on my desk here. Yesterday I have um, recorded the German version of this video and I'm left over with some really weird things on my desk that I have to use today because of the experiences that I made yesterday. So in my German video, I've tried to make this decorative embroidery stuff on this journaling card. What you can see here is, yeah, some kind of my result. <laughs> I had a little disaster on my table during this video and then I went a little bit crazy and I crumbled up my card because I was so angry. I'm showing you a picture of the card here. That was the end result that I had in my German video. I had an idea in my mind how I can make a really easy but elegant and nice embroidery but it went totally wrong. I was so Ah, oh, so angry. I can't bring this this into English words. I was absolutely confused, angry, not satisfied, so disappointed about myself. But I didn't want to start um, this video new. I didn't want to make a second uh, yeah, version of this video because I thought I'm a junk journaler and I want to use what I have and I want to go through this process. So I took this card that I have shown you here on the picture and I have um, teared it into some collage fodder. I know this looks really, really weird. And then I took pieces of my crumbled card and I made a new card. I will show you that here. So if you're interested in watching how this card came to life, you can check out my German video. There you can see um, how, I've, how, ha <laughs> how I have created this. And... When I'm looking at this today, I nearly can't believe that I went from this to this because now I'm totally happy. I'm totally in love with this journaling card. Now Susanne can flip this out like this. Um, she can take some junk or <laughs> whatever, put it in here because here is a, is a pocket. You, she can use this as journaling space. Um, perhaps... I'm not sure, but perhaps I will use this as journaling space for myself and write something to her here. I'm not sure about that. I'm not, I have not decided if I want her to use this space or if I want to use it by myself. Then you can flip it like this and it's hidden in the journal and then you can um, flip this over and here's the second part of this little hinge. And here is also a pocket. Yeah, so this was crazy this was really really crazy and i have thought about how i can make the english version of this video the whole day and i have decided that i want to try to give you this feeling 
that I had in the German video. I don't know if that is possible, I w but I would like to try my best to give you this feeling that I had in my video and uh, in this other video and um, this feeling of using something that you would normally throw into your trash can because this is junk. This is, this is, yeah, you can see this is totally dis destroyed it is totally yeah not beautiful it is the uh, the ugliest thing that you can imagine but i would like to try to use this to make a new journaling card today and show you how you can turn something like this into a piece of art that you like and that you can be satisfied with because the only person that has to be satisfied with this card uh, that I'm making today is me. Or in your case, when you are creating something, the only person that has to be satisfied with the result is you. So, um, yeah, that's the goal of this video. And um, for this journaling card, I would like to take some papers from 49 Dragonflies online shop. I have chosen this paper collection um, and some other things i will list everything down below this video so that you can find it really easily <coughs> oh excuse me please so um this printable is a relatively new printable and i think barbara has outdone herself with this printable i think this is the most beautiful thing that she has ever thrown into her shop i am so in love with this printable you can't imagine so it looks a little bit strange here because I have already um, cut some pictures out of these pages. So please check out Barbara's shop. There you can see the full pages of this printable. She also has some background pages. This is one of the background pages and the other one I have cut up for the journaling cards. So that you can also print those out for a normal junk journal as normal pages. And then you can... Um, take the background pages and print them to the back of your um, journaling pages. I really like that she has put those backgrounds into the kit as well um, because then you have everything at hand that you probably need if you want to make a journal. Um, okay, so then I also have um, printed out these tags. Um, Vintage Tags Large is the name of this printable. There are four, no, eight, sorry, there are eight of those um, bigger tags. I want to use those for the back side of my journaling card as I did it with the other one as well. And um, I have prepared something here. So this shall be the base of my journaling card for today. Um, this is just the background page from Barbara's printable, the second page that I have talked about before. And then I have used another printable of her shop. Um, this is some gessoed journaling cards. She has that as a printable. And as you can see, I've printed that to fabric. So hopefully you can see that. I've put some fabric with washi tape to a normal DNA4 sheet of paper, fixed everything, and then I have run that through my printer and printed out those gessoed um, cards to this fabric. Um, after that, I have teared this so that I get this really cool edge here of this fabric. And then I have sewed that to the card with a zigzag stitch and added this black lace. And this shall be the base for my journaling card for today. And I want to include these scraps. <laughs> Louisa, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> <coughs> And I also want to have um, a focal point for my card. <sighs> this covers up really, really much of the background of this card now. Um, I'm not so happy with that, to be honest. Especially because it covers the lace here. Let's make a little trick. I have found out a trick for myself. Um, if I want to use an image and I want to have the, the exact position for my image and I want to make a collage later, then it's always a problem that this moves around a lot while you are working on the rest of the card. So I thought about a solution and I found the solution. It's really tiny, as you can see here. These are some tiny magnets and I'm just putting one magnet here to my card, <clears throat> one magnet to my table here 
Then I'm moving the card on top of the magnet that's on my table. It automatically goes there where it yeah, goes to the other magnet on the top. And that way I can um, fix my focal point of this card really easily and it will not fall off. I can um, put some things behind here without moving the rest. I really like this idea. Hopefully it's a little trick for you as well. Let's try something. What can happen? <laughs> You can go through a second disaster, Louisa. That can happen. Yeah, <laughs> perhaps that will happen. So I'm trying to tear this so that we can see the lace through here. I think now this has to go a little bit higher. And with those magnets, that's really easy because now you can move that around where you want to have it and yeah it will stay there <laughs> okay so i think that's great now we have this it's really yeah not so good that we don't see so much of this fabric now but i think i like that um and especially with this little edge here can we perhaps can we perhaps let's try something let's move the magnet here to here um can we perhaps tear this like so? Don't tear into the birdie, Louise, but tear out a little piece here like that. Perhaps a little bit more so that we can yeah, now I can see the rectangled shape of the fabric. And I really like that. I really like that. Okay. So, uh, okay. Now I have to remove this here for a short time. Because... Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. My maglet, magnets are flying around here. Because now I want to <coughs> distress the edges of this. For that plan, I'm using some Distress Oxide ink. This is Walnut Stain. And now I want to take my little scraps here. I want to try to arrange those as yeah some kind of collage fodder around this image here. So that this is not, yeah, you know, this looks really teared now but I want to try to include that into the background or how can I say that so that the brown edge um, with this distressing goes into the background here is some of my embroidery fail as you can see there are some of those embroidery strings left over here and on the other card I've also used those I, I had some more of them so you can find them here on the top and you can find those here at the bottom so um, of course that's only a leftover and that was this fail but perhaps we can include these things here as well I think the thing with this white frame, uh, with this white frame, sorry, with this fabric frame is the main problem of this whole thing. It gets really weird 
if I put those scraps here. So I am trying something else. Let's try to give this fabric frame a frame. So what will happen when I put, I have this here that has um, some zigzag stitching here. Um, what if we try to put that around this fabric so that we get perhaps a second frame that makes this fabric also a little bit more visible because if this frame is more visible then perhaps the fabric is visible more visible as well Something tells me that <clears throat> this is not the right focal point for this card. I seriously have a problem because my bowl of chocolate balls is empty. I have only this water here <laughs> that <laughs> needs to fresh my brain. Mm. And I think this stuff around the bird is too much. I have not enough negative space on this card. Um, in the meantime, I thought if it would be a great idea to put these little things here to the very edge of the card. What's going on here with my magnet? But I think even if I do that um, and if I would place these little guys here um, I, I'm not I'm not totally happy with that um, that looks way more strange than before so I'm just thinking of uh, taking this away because it's so big and it has such a weird shape I mean I made this shape by myself but <laughs> let's try to take one of the other images from Barbara's paper. I mean, this looks better already, um, I guess. And also the owl, I think, looks better. But with the red here, and the red thread, I think this bird would be the better decision because, yeah, we have the red here as well. Um, I want to try that, but I want to tear a little bit more here. And sometimes I'm really not sure if I shall enjoy those processes with these projects or if I shall hate it because yeah <laughs> you know so <clears throat> let's try to distress this year as well okay so now let's rearrange those scraps mm, yesterday I have used some mushrooms as well so I have some mushroom stickers here. I'm just thinking if it would make sense to put one of those there. I mean, that's a little bit strange because it's on the top, but hmm. why not? This is perhaps a little bit big.
Ah, uh, that uh, this is driving me crazy. This is totally driving me crazy. This is so weird, so weird. I don't like that. The longer I look at it, the more I hate it. I'm I'm beginning to to really hate this. And that's not a good feeling. That's totally not good, Louisa. That's not good. I want to have this weird thing on my card. That can't be so hard. I mean, it's only a piece of little strings that has to be possible. Louisa, concentration. That is too much on the top of the card. I need this negative space here. I don't want to have this like stone to fall on the head of this bird. I mean, that's weird. Don't do that, Louisa. Don't do that. If I want to put that here, the card has no frame here. It has nothing here on the bottom. That looks strange. That's weird. Even if the negative space gets a little bit bigger here in this area. But, yeah. If I put that here, that looks even more weird. No. No, 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 definitely not, Louisa. What about putting this little... Can we put this mushroom behind... Why are there two mushrooms? Oh, my goodness. Behind this thing. Is that possible? Perhaps. Please, let this be possible. That looks a little bit cute, but the mushroom is really small now. Totally weird. Totally weird. Ark. Oh. No, 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 no. I don't want to tell you that this is not possible. I know. This has to be possible. Everything is possible. We are making junk journals and everything that we want to do is possible. That's, that's, yeah, my philosophy. Is that a word? I don't know. Everything that we want to do, we can do. And I want to show that it is possible. But how? <laughs> my goodness. What the heck am I doing here? I really don't know. I really don't know. This edge of this thing is so weird. Don't want to cover up this flower here. Okay, so um, now I get a really strange idea. What if we what if we take this whole shit and turn it sideways? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, perhaps that can work better. Let's try that. Let's just bring that into this position. I mean, now we have not so much much space above this bird, but we have much space here and perhaps now it would make sense to put the mushroom arrangement here to give this red a little bit more attention.
hmm, <laughs> I'm not satisfied. I, I'm not ready to sew these little scraps to this card because I think something is going wrong here because something is missing. And I've just looked to my other card that I've made here and I'm realizing that I have these little dots here from a stencil on my scraps, on some of the scraps. Um, and here we have nothing of that until now. And I think we are going to need some of those white dots in the background somewhere. Um, for example, here, I guess we can take that off and then Oh, excuse me. Then we can place the stencil here and check if it's in the right position. Perhaps a little bit more to the right, like this. Okay. Then I will take some white gesso, and this time I will not make um, what I normally. I will not do what I normally would do. Uh, normally, I would thicken this gesso with some marble dust um, to get something like a structure paste, a homemade structure paste. I normally do that to get the gesso a little bit thicker, but in this case I guess it will stick to the fabric really well and it will give us a nice stenciling here without uh, the marble dust in it. And I also want to have a little bit grungy look of my stenciling, not so totally clear. Oh, it's clear. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. <laughs> if you want to have a clear stenciling, you don't get it because you move the stencil or whatever, and if you don't want it, and if you want to have it messy, then you get this. <laughs> yeah, nice, Louisa. Very nice. Uh, <laughs> that's not what I wanted. Okay, so let's try something. Let's Arg. Um, okay. Okay, 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 okay. That's not good. <laughs> so let's take some of this bubble wrapping thing, what I have here. This is not grungy enough. I have to do that now and manipulate it now because later on when it's dry, of course, I can't do anything to it. So let's just press the bubble wrapping into the stenciling, then perhaps we can just smear that around a little bit like that. I think that's better. That looks more, yeah, abstract and not so, not so, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. Okay. Okay, so I think I like that better. And now I will dry this area with my heat gun, put this little mushroom arrangement back to this and then I will sew around this whole thing and um, sew these scraps to my card. Okay, so and now I would like to give this card a frame. I did that with the other card as well. And for that I have used a book page. I mean for the other card I have used a book page. And I've just splattered around a little bit with some coffee and other things. So I have a mixture of coffee, white gesso uh, and gel medium here. It became really thick in the meantime, but that's great because then it um, takes not so long to dry. And I want to splatter to this book page a little bit and make some interesting, yeah, you know, 
uh, things here so that I can tear that up and use that as a frame for this card. By splattering some darker things, I'm just realizing that my coffee is obviously not so dark as I expected, but I think that's okay. And oh, we could also perhaps add some gold. I mean, Susanne loves gold and this card will go into her journal. So I mean, why not using some gold? Yeah, here that looks really interesting. <laughs> Hopefully that looks the same when it's dry. I don't know. Probably not, but <laughs> let's see. Okay, so this is dry now and I can take this page out and I think this looks really, really amazing. Really great collage fodder that we can use to make a frame around our card now. And I've also painted one page in black. I've just used some black acrylic paint because I want to make yeah some kind of a double frame now so that the frame of this card looks the most interesting <laughs> and um, another reason is that this is really flimsy until now and I want to make it a little bit more sturdy even if I will put something totally different to the back side uh, in another step. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to take this piece of paper and I will just tear this frame here and I've just decided that I want to have nearly no text on my frame so I have a tiny bit of text here but the rest is only this yeah textless thing of the book page then I will put that like this so that it peeks out only a little bit I will glue that down I did that with the other card, so I'm sure that I want to do that here as well. <laughs> That's a great thing that I don't have to think about how I want to do that, because I know I want to do this exactly like this. Like that. And then I will take this page uh, that I have painted with black acrylic paint, and I will take my ruler and just try to get a e really irregular edge. So I'm not tearing along the ruler. I mean, I would take the paper and tear it in this direction to get a really straight edge from my ruler. But I'm taking the paper and I'm moving it around a little bit to the left and the right so that I get a nearly straight edge, but a little bit irregular. Do you know what I mean? And I'm tearing it towards myself to get this white frame because we have lots of white on the uh, card itself and I want to catch this white here as well. Now I think I want to sew around this outer edge of this card, I mean around here. Okay, so this looks like this now. I've went around with my sewing machine here and I tried to get this really regular, as you can see um, in the most areas I, I could manage that. I think that gives this card a little bit more... Mm, it, it becomes calmer, a little bit calmer, not so wild, when this is really regular. And it is a cool contrast in my eyes to have this really crazy torn edge and this regular frame with the stitching. Um, since Susanne has written, we shall make um, some decorative embroidery to the card. I have the feeling that something is missing here. I mean, I have the embroidery thread here um, and some of that here from my old card, but is that uh, decorative? I, I don't know. <laughs> so the first thing that I want to try is, I want to take some of these little guys here, and I mean, this will become something different 
from what Susanne is, spec is expecting me doing. Um, she is expecting that I will take a needle and I will make some embroidery to my card. Um, yeah, what she will get is t something totally different, but I hope she will like it. <laughs> so we'll take these little golden guys here and I will try to put them here to this little thing so that it looks like this little grass has some blossoms or something like that but I'm just thinking how can I fix that that it stays there I can't make a knot because <clears throat> this thread is so uh, short but I guess if I put a little bit of glue here and then just put this thing on top that will stay there and it will not fall off hopefully um, Okay, so uh, mm, <laughs> this is really wide here. I like that, but I think I want to put a tiny bit of coffee here and there. Okay, and since um, Susanna's menu for this blind date requires some decorative embroidery, um, I don't want to give her only these ugly, <laughs> distressed, used embroidery threads, but I want to try to make some decorative embroidery here. Really, really small, really tiny, um, with a red thread as well because we have so much red here i think that could um, look nice so i will just make some ooh, uh, try to make some cross stitching is that the right word hmm, hopefully so let's just make a knot here on the back so that this uh, thread can't run away Ah, it's really hard to get through all of this material, so I think I will use an awl. Where's my awl? And where's my book? <laughs> I will just take this, and I think that's easier to handle as well. I will just poke some holes like this so that I can get through this easier. I think I like that. <laughs> it's a small embroidery, but it's decorative and it's an embroidery. <laughs> okay, so I will just make a knot here. And I think that's it for today. This card is not finished yet because we have nothing on the back side. And we also have to find a solution how to include the card into Susanna's journal, of course. Um, in my next video, I would like to show you how I create the bag and how I include it to the journal. I will make a little flip out and I will also add a quote um, to this card. So here's much space left so that we can make a quote. And I would like to show you a way to find a really interesting, really unique quote by doing some blackout poetry. 
If you never heard about Blackout Pro Poetry, then please check out my next video. I will show you step by step how to do that. I will do it a little, little bit different than it's normally done, but it's a really great way to find a really unique quote for your cards, for your journaling pages and so on. So see you in my next video that's coming up tomorrow. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you like this. See you. Bye bye.